how are you doing? My name's Keith, I'm from Cruelcon, and you're listening to What's Metal. This is Joe from Cruelcon, and you're listening to What's Metal. So, uh, we featured Cruelcon uh, before twice, but I have to say, uh, with, with folklore and uh, maybe also with the new city, Pagan, um, you did a very big step concerning or regarding mat maturity. So the song mat material got much better, in my opinion. So maybe for the listeners that are not so familiar with the band, you can just briefly sum up your, your band history, so what you released so far and how the whole thing progressed. Yeah, we, like, as a lot of people know, we're going a fairly long time, almost 12, 13 years at the moment. Um, the first demo we done was about 1993, it was Celtica. Um, uh, we released Two and a Gale after the demo on Nazgul's Irie Productions. Um, we had a bit of interest around the world. We got a, that album got a cult following. We did a lot of interest from it and so on. We got interest then from Century Media Records, which we weren't we weren't interested in because there's, there's a lot of stuff. It's kind of a famous thing. Every interview they ask us about it. Yeah, we got the interest from Century Media, but uh, the contract being offered was, at the time, it was really, really bad. They were looking to control the band basically and take all our musical freedom so we turned them down and as a result of that and a few other things the band broke up because we felt really we'd nowhere else to go but luckily our fans who would bought the album Two and a Gale didn't think the same way and they got in touch and said we should get back together and we should be create more music which we did do eventually myself and my brother John got the band back together with a slightly different lineup we got um John Clotsey back in and Joe was recruited from our local pub and when we were recording our first album with Hammerheart, which was the Middle Kingdom, we had Karen in as a guest and she eventually joined. Um, the Middle Kingdom got luckily great reviews, great, great response around the world and we then recorded Folklore which also got a great response and started touring. We started playing live for the first time outside of Ireland and that's more or less it. Really brief history. Before Kruokon, the band was called Minus Tiris. Yeah. Is that right? So how did that sound? Was it in the same direction? Um, it was really... Minas Tirith started off very, very experimental. Um, just I remember at the time I was listening to a lot of Primus and I was really into the kind of weird stuff they were doing. So it was a mix of death metal, trash metal and eventually from out of nowhere the folk music started coming into it. And we got more... like all the Minas Tirith songs were about Tolkien and Lord of the Rings. But um, as we got more and more folky, we decided, you know, it'd be much more interesting to sing about our own Irish history, and there's such a wealth of, you know, topics to sing about there. So we said it'd be fitting to change the name of the band as well to a name from Irish mythology. How important is it for you to get your message across, the lyrical message? So, for example, with folklore, you had comments to every song in the booklet. So. It, it is important for me, but I, I mean, I'm a fan of music myself. Sometimes I, I wouldn't even read a band's lyrics, so I wouldn't care. I just like the music and I'd like the sound. Personally, it's important, but, you know, I wouldn't press it upon people. I do. If people want to know what the song is about and really, really are into the music, the option is there to go and read the notes. But um, not everyone is like that, and I have to, I accept that. Not everyone is like, you know, going to want to know the ins and outs of the songs. They just like music, so if that's the case, just listen to it. Don't even read the notes. So, um, when you compare the old Kruokon with, with the new reformed Kruokon, um, how did the band chemistry change? Or is it nearly the same like in the early days? Or is it a different feeling nowadays? To be honest, it's more or less the same feeling. I know, like a lot of people said, the difference in music is in some places quite quite a difference, especially with the Middle Kingdom comparing that to Two and the Gale. But the vibe in the band is better than ever. With Two and the Gale, we never played outside Ireland. We'd won kind of decent label that came to us and then it was a disaster because what they were offering us was just nothing so the vibe now is we have something to aim for we have goals you know we can achieve much better so it, if it's not the same it's definitely a better vibe than it ever was being a metal band from ireland do you think uh, that this is more a benefit or it is a curse i think it's a bit of a curse actually because the early scene is kind of overlooked apart from ourselves primordial and maybe gasa and other bands we're the only ones holding the scene together over here. Probably because of lack of interest in the scene, I don't know. But maybe also other, other metal fans from abroad are looking to Ireland with a special uh, feeling or a special interest because it's so so different here. So the, I think well, most of the Irish Irish bands sound very very distinct to all, all the other stuff that is around in, in the metal scene today. Yeah, uh, that's true. Uh, what Joe was saying is totally true. But um. 
Like I've heard this even in 97, when uh, just before Cruelcon broke up, there was the big interest in the Irish scene, but nothing really seemed to develop from there. There's one or two bands that have made it, but that's it. I think the the way the Irish fans are as well, they're very close, close-minded. They, um, you know, it's hard to describe, but the, the vibe we get over here playing gigs, like you see, the gig we're playing tonight is a very small venue, and you get a lot of bands coming out, and they're wishing you, you know, they're a bit jealous about you, they're not happy about it. In Europe, you don't get that. Everyone's out to help each other. You know, they look out for each other, the bands do. I, I personally think in Ireland it's a little bit different. People are jealous, you know, they begrudge it. There's a lot of begrudgery over here. So, uh, concerning you will have a major impact with the new record and uh, all the reviews will be fine and you're becoming something like the hip band of the moment, even more famous than Westlife, so how, how far w will you be willing to take the band? So, are there any restrictions where you would say, well, this is my private life, I have to keep that up, or would you give up your jobs for the band and, and so on? Well, if it takes off, we are willing to give up our, our jobs for the band. As far as restrictions, if anyone ever restricted us in our writing, you know, if we were kind of told, dictated to as to what to release, I think that would yeah. be the only thing that Definitely, would yeah. ruin us, I mean, we, basically. We spoke to it tonight. I mean, even Karen and Joe says they'd be willing to do gigs naked just to get the crowds in. <laughs> no, there's, there's no restrictions in Cruelcon. So the new album will be out soon, called Pagan. So please give us all the necessary info. Um, well, it's released yesterday in Europe. It was released at the start of March in Russia. There's a licensing thing with Russia. For some, like we have a lot of fans over there, so they set up a different license thing, and it's getting its first proper release in America as well. I think in a month's time. So, for I, I don't know what way the label is working at the moment with Plastic Head Distribution. So, um, I know it's out in the shops at the moment in Europe, but as far as Ireland's concerned, I'm not I'm not even sure if it's out over here. We, we have a couple of copies here for the release gig, and that's about it. Talking about Russia. So what, what is so special about Russia? Why are, are you so famous there? I think you, you headlined a festival over there, is that right? We did, yeah. We done the St. Petersburg Festival. Uh, the day, was it? Yeah. St. Patrick's. Uh, Patrick's Day <laughs> Festival in St. Petersburg. Mm -hmm. And uh, we got a great reaction there. I think the people in Russia, they have a similar like of traditional music. So that's probably why appeal to, we appeal to the Russians more so than the Irish. <laughs> Okay, so our show is called What's Metal, so what, what does metal mean to you? Is it just music? Can it be a form of lifestyle? Or? Uh, it's mainly leather and spikes and beer. That's that's all. Music doesn't even come into it. <laughs> I'd have to disagree with Keith. Music does come in a little bit. <laughs>